Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bitcoin Show. This is a live CES Consumer Electronics Show 2012 edition. And uh, we have an amazing opportunity to have uh, the cast members from The Good Wife. You've heard of The Good Wife on CBS, everybody watches it. And, uh, the, and everybody in the Bitcoin world knows that there's going to be a Bitcoin episode this Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So we have with us uh, Nicholas Flower Hi. and Robert Taylor. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome to the Bitcoin Show. This is Bruce Wagner, you know, and uh, I am live here in C at CES, uh, Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, and um, I just arrived late last night, but uh, we got the most incredible coup because everyone knows that, as I said, the, the good wife on CBS is doing a major episode all about Bitcoin. It's called Bitcoin for Dummies is the title of the episode, and they're going to talk about Satoshi and all kinds of stuff. So. Uh, but anyway, we got a major coup because we have with us some of the cast members from The Good Wife. And uh, so with us are Nicholas Flower and Robert Taylor. They're in the studio in New York. I'm in Las Vegas. So can you say, hey guys. Uh, Br Bruce, <laughs> we're actually taking over. We're the hosts today. Yes. You're the host. That's right. And I'm the guest. So you can ask me questions. <laughs> Go ahead, ask. Well, I, I also want to I wanna make clear. You're no. a cast. I, uh, Nick is a cast member. I was standing in that day when we, when we met, so I, I'm not a cast member. So you're, oh, you're not, a, not a regular cast member, but you're standing in. Well, you right. were in the cast that day. Is that it? No, 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 no. Only Nick. He, he's, the, he's the guy that's going to get the credits on the show. Oh, right. okay, you're, okay. You're the cast of my heart. Cool. He's and I, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. The, I've already been um, told to ask, obviously, the, the obvious question. Um, what is it like to work with Juliana Margulies? Margulies, how do you say your last name? <laughs> well, it was, it was really great. She was very nice. Um, when I got on set, the very first moment, it was, it was pretty funny. I didn't recognize her. Um, you know, we went in for our rehearsal and we started it up. It was with Jason Biggs and uh, David Furr. And she interrupts the scene. Um, and so... Here, here she comes, and you know she's not in costume yet. She hasn't, she hasn't uh, done costume or makeup, and she comes in and does her lines. And I'm like, oh, I wonder why her stand-in is reading her lines. And then she introduces herself, <laughs> and it was the straight hair too. I, I, you know, grew up watching ER, and so, you know, I have yeah. this idea of of her with curly hair, and so I just. It was kind of embarrassing, it really was, but uh, she was very, very nice. Um, she was very accessible and introduced herself and just was totally normal. Very, very relaxed, yes. funny. She was, you know. That's how, that's how I like my stars, to be hot and accessible. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you need to be. Yeah. You know, she, she was uh, <laughs> talking with people on set and just being really nice. She, she wasn't like... Um, it, it wasn't like she needed everyone to know that, the, that she was on set. She just kind of was on set, you know? It was just living yeah. and, and doing her, her job. That's great. Yeah. That's great. That's great. That's how she, people should be. People are just people anyway, so I people agree. that are full of themselves are just full of themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right. So we're going we're gonna to come back to the gossip and, and dish the dirt. As I want to I have a lot more about that. But I want to know about Bitcoin. Had you ever heard of Bitcoin before you were handed this script? No, I had not. You guys? I, I had not. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, Robert, I have talked with you and I found out you, you were already a Bitcoin fan, right? You, how, when did you find out about it, Robert? I, I, I don't know specifically the, the, the date, but I do remember being in California and I think it was either late 09 or early... I, no, you know, I, I feel like it was somewhere mid or, or late 09 is when I first heard about it. And I didn't get really into it until it got very close to reaching parity with the dollar.
Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how we measure Bitcoin time by the value of Bitcoin. Right. But when it was seven dollars, that's when I got I got in at a dollar ninety eight. You know, <laughs> it was so funny. Then when it hit thirty, I cra yeah. <laughs> I right. bought it at thirty and sold it at a dollar. <laughs> so um okay, so Nicholas, what um when uh, like how how long ago did you were you hand set and you the first time you heard the word Bitcoin then? A few weeks ago? Yeah, well, I guess we shot the episode maybe Harry? a month ago, and I had I was handed the script maybe a week before we shot the the episode, and so I had very yeah. very little time to kind of you know digest do, it. do my do my research, but I, I did, and you know, kind of got the general overview of you know, it's obviously been around for. Mm -hmm. A while now to pick up some speed, but um, yeah, I found it really, really interesting. I, I was talking to Robert earlier. I, I find it so interesting that uh, it's really hard mm -hmm. to counterfeit. Cool. I think that's pretty cool. And uh, but yeah, I, I was handed the script a week before. I I knew nothing about it, so I did my research and kind of just jumped in. We might have. We, we might have. I, 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 I can ask him a couple of questions. So, sure. Uh, how about Jason Biggs? How, I thought he was super down to earth. Jason Biggs was really cool. Uh, my one of my favorite moments on set. Well, not on set, just you know, yeah. in the experience was my interaction, my first interaction with Jason Biggs. I had to be at the van at seven thirty in the morning um, in like Midtown, and we were just to be driven to the studio and no one's really around it's kind of you know just the city's just kind of sleeping still right and i see a van and it has the sign that says the good wife and the there's just two people in the van it's uh the driver and the passenger and the passenger is his window is down and i start walking up and the passenger's like nicholas flower and i'm like yeah it goes jason biggs <laughs> <laughs> my mind is blown and so I got in the van, and just the, the three of us kind of just yeah. rode to the studio together, yeah. and it was, it was funny. It was, it was you know, it, I didn't want to talk to him too much because it was 7.30 in the morning. Right. Like, we're all kind of groggy, just having our morning coffee, but... But, I mean, he, he dresses, <laughs> like, in, the, in, like, these just casual, like, yeah. homeboy jeans and, like, you know, just, like, it's, I think he got even some with a backpack and just, yeah. like, a, grungy jacket and he's, he's just guy. really chill he's yeah. really really cool yeah. uh, and I thought it was really interesting um, seeing him kind of I mean I don't, I don't want to say starstruck but yeah, a little starstruck with Bob Balaban well, yeah. I, yeah I mean you know it, like you know Bob Balaban's it, it's Bob Balaban you know so and they had never met before and so yeah. I thought that was really cool That's to fun. see him being like you know yeah. around someone who he really admired and then who does Bob play in the in the, in the episode? Um, Bob plays a well. I don't want to give it away. He's a, he's actually re um, he's uh, re he's a reoccurring character now. This is his second uh, appearance on the show, and he plays my boss. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess I just haven't I seen character's it name, but <laughs> I think we got him back. Hey. Welcome back. <laughs> so, Nicholas, when you were handed this script and it said Bitcoin in it, you had never heard of the word Bitcoin? Like, did you have any idea what it was? I had no idea. Um, the only thing I really knew, you know, from the very beginning was that my character, uh, a federal agent from the Treasury, was very nervous about this strange online currency that had been created. And, and my, my job was to basically nail the creator. And so yeah. from then, I just kind of Googled it and did a little, little research and, you know, found a, a bunch of different, you know, topics on it, you know, from Wikipedia to YouTube shows to, to everything. And it's, it was really clear to me that, that it's not just some passing trend, it seems. So you, were, you knew that it was actually something real. It wasn't completely fictional. Yes, I did. 
knew it was real. Okay. And so, but what, because somebody had said, like, oh, no, that's a real thing. <laughs> I mean, no, I literally just Googled it. I, I just, I didn't really know what it was. And um, actually, the original... You the script and you Googled it. Is this real? <laughs> uh, the original wow. title uh, was different. It was called Finding, uh, Mr. Finding Mr. Bitcoin. Kind of a play on Finding Mr. Goodyear. Uh, right. Yeah. Exactly. So... Uh, or good, I, is it so good bar? Uh, when you good so bar. you play the role, I'm so, I can't hear Robert, but when you when you you uh, <laughs> I had to pass the phone back and forth. Anyway, it's crazy. So when you um, were so you play the the attorney who uh, has the client Satoshi, who um, and you're protecting his identity. Is that right? No, I'm actually a federal agent from the Treasury. Who oh. uh, I'm a pair. I'm one uh, half of a pair. Of federal agents who's very nervous about Mr. Bitcoin himself, and they're basically right. after. Um, we're kind of aware that uh, Jason Biggs' character is an online lawyer, and we suspect that his client is Mr. Bitcoin. So, Mr. Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, that's what. That's actually the original. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but that was the original title of the episode was <laughs> I don't think that I don't think yeah, changing I don't titles finding either. Mr. Bitcoin yeah. that's funny I like Bitcoin for dummies I, I like that I better say. too our, our website is yeah yeah I hope they don't get sued by the four dummies book series <laughs> but that's okay it's all good right. <laughs> that's CBS's problem so um so what was <laughs> so um when you googled it and you, I mean you already knew it was a real thing I mean what was your first impression about it, it does this seem like I mean, did, did it seem like this is a real thing, or I mean, not, not you know, it's a real thing, but it, like this is a uh, a growing movement, or does it seem, did it seem like a real off the wall, uh, uh, you know, specialty kind of thing? Well, you know, that's that's really interesting because Quirky thing. when I googled it, I definitely found a multitude of of, of topics on, on it, and <laughs> I would say like the first three were. Uh, you know, Bitcoin and Ponzi scheme, Ponzi scheme, Ponzi scheme. And right. it was, um, that was the first thing that entered my brain when I, I uh, read about it. And so I definitely was approaching it thinking like, okay, this is um, probably, you know, passing quickly. But then as I, as I, you know, read on and kind of Found about found out about all the investors and and you know how how many people were involved and you know how how serious it is. Could kind of see that it it's going to be around. It looks like it's going to be around for a while. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's not a it's not a Ponzi scheme, obviously, because the definition of a by definition a Ponzi scheme is that the new and uh, new investors capital that they put in goes to the old investors. Um, so obviously it's not a Ponzi scheme, <laughs> but uh, you know that's people like to throw those words around because they don't know what it is. It's brand new, you know, in the history of mankind. It's never existed before, so they try and put it in a box that already has a label. So they'll put it in, you know, Ponzi scheme or MLM or all kinds of crazy nonsense. But it it is definitely not that. So uh, and anyway, people people love to. And, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just was going to say people fear what they don't understand, and when it's new like that, it's yes. scary. Yes, that's right. That's for sure. They do. And it's, I mean, like I, I always say, I mean, this is really new in the history of mankind. There's never been a currency that's completely decentralized and limited in quantity. It's not issued by any bank or government, uh, you know, or corporation. This is really, really unique. So, uh, of course, you know, The Good Wife and, uh, is very timely with its, uh, you know, topics, everything from Occupy Wall Street to now Bitcoin, because it's, it's in the news. <laughs> Mt.com and tell them that 
Uh, merchant services. If your business, whether it's an online web store or a brick and mortar business of any kind, whether you're an accountant, a CPA, a nail salon, or a restaurant, it doesn't matter. You look for you this want to logo set up to accept at Bitcoin restaurants in just in New York moment. There are zero transaction fees, zero monthly and maintenance fees, zero hardware investment, and there's no such thing as a chargeback. You'll never, ever can get a chargeback with Bitcoin. We're there to help you set up your business to accept Bitcoin. That's BitcoinSolutions.com. So check that out. Okay, so now back to uh, Robert and Nicholas. So where were we? Um, so I was asking you, um, Nicholas, so like, after you Googled Bitcoin, I, you, you, the first thing that you read were about that it's a Ponzi scheme or something, and then you started re realizing and reading that it's, it's actually there's more to it than that. What, like, how large did you perceive that the community was, the Bitcoin community, the user base? Initially, I, I didn't realize how big it was. Um, you know, it kind of it kind of seemed like uh, your standard internet bashers, you know, your trolls, just kind of lingering around. And as I did more research, I I realized that the community was very large. And as a as a new community, it's kind of amazing how how fast it's grown and how much it's ex expanded and. And picked up speed, and yeah, so that was really, yeah. really interesting to me. Okay, did, did the uh, I'm wondering uh, what was that? Oh, I didn't say anything. Oh, that's my. I'm sorry, that's myself coming back. I'm hearing myself. And, um, sorry. <laughs> now my question Just the way you're holding it, it is, um, it's doing a little bit of if echo. If the uh, cast or anybody bought any Bitcoin, knowing you know that this is uh, gonna be. Yeah, actually, that's what we were just talking about. Um, I, I think that that probably will, uh, in in some way, uh, help help the uh, market or help the community. That's for sure. Once this this comes out, uh, once the episode airs on Sunday, I think that um, I think you can expect something like that. I mean, I, I'm definitely not a. a uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm 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 not. I'm not, well, I'm not an investor, nor am I, you know, someone to uh, <laughs> really uh, share much of an opinion on, on, on the, the market itself. But I, 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 would, I would say that if it's so popular right now, and then you take a show like The Good Wife, which is an Emmy and Golden Globe winning show, which a lot of people watch, I think that it's going yeah. to really raise a lot of curiosity for the people that have no idea what it is. And exactly. what a great title for that, you know, Bitcoin for Dummies. What a great title I to get people even more interested. That's the phrase I always use when I was describing BitcoinMe.com is that, that I created it kind of as a Bitcoin for Dummies. Just to explain it in really simple language to, you know, Fred and Mark, you know, the barely can work a mouse crowd. And, uh, but yeah, the price has gone up like crazy. It's 691 at this moment. And it seems like it's going up about 25 to 50 cents a day. Wow. I mean, at least, it seems like so uh, fascinating. And this is right like after... In the early days next week, like Monday through Wednesday next week, there's going to be a huge buying spree. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. <laughs> Who knows, you know, after, after all this, I might, I might go out and get some Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, talk to me after, I can tell you, can hook you up totally. Yeah, please do. I've got connections. <laughs> I can just ring up Satoshi and he can commit you some more. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in the heart of uh, the Mt. Gox food at CES, so uh, we can get to some Bitcoin, no problem. Nice. But yeah, it would definitely, I mean, if you're, I was going to, I mean, I've been telling my friends, if you're going to buy Bitcoin, definitely do it before Sunday at night. Yeah. And the, the Monday morning water cooler talk, they're going to say, did you see that, the good wife last night? Yeah, you know, that's a real thing. <laughs> we should buy that. And uh, it's going to go nuts. Who knows? It could be 10 times the current value by then. There's no telling, really. <laughs> it, it could There's be. Telling. But I, it's really exciting to see all these products. We're going we're gonna to be doing some subsequent episodes where we're uh, showing you a lot of the new products that are on display here to uh, dispense bitcoins from an ATM and um, also to dispense cash from ATMs with, you know, from bitcoin to cash and vice versa. And also, also at the point of sale terminals and devices for uh, businesses to accept bitcoins, super, super easy. 
Uh, oh, Bruce. That's, it's, I think it's going to be huge. Hmm? I want to say that, you know, it's all, there's always the possibility there that there can be over-speculation because of this show and the people that are uh, oh, yeah. in, in, the, in the community uh, can, I mean, it's, there's always the foreseeable possibility that, there, that there's a kind of a confirmation loop, a kind of a uh, yeah. confirmation bias, and they, and they might over-speculate the, the, the value of, of Bitcoins. Hmm. Um, but, then there, right. but, but likewise, there's always a possibility that such a popular show like The Good Wife is just going to open an entire new community of people that are going to get interested and uh, start investing in, in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So... It's it's interesting yeah, to ultimately it's gonna explode. <laughs> oh well, I know. I you I, I think you've made some predictions, right? What you think? You made some. Well, I think what I was gonna, what I was saying was that sorry, there's a little delay. But what I was gonna say is that I'm telling my friends. I mean this. It's like um, if you're gonna buy Bitcoin anytime soon, buy it before Sunday. Um, if you I would not buy it necessarily next week because everyone's gonna be buying it next week, and you're gonna get caught by that speculator's. Uh, it's not a bubble, but it's like a little bubble. It's gonna, it'll, it's gonna go up, and it'll come back down a bit. It'll correct later. So if you're gonna buy it as an investment, buy it and hold it for at least a year, and you can't go wrong. As long as you buy it and hold it for a year, you really can't go wrong. But if you're gonna buy it in the next few weeks, definitely buy it before Sunday. <laughs> right, right. Especially if you're trying to do some, right? some quick investing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems, it seems yeah, like that's. I mean, it could go up to. If it goes out, to, if it goes up to seventy, I'm definitely pulling out. <laughs> and it's gone. Yeah. Well, it's all about timing, isn't it? Uh, well, I was telling you uh, when we met that I was uh, I I made the I made the decision to pull out at thirty. Okay. I was like, this is this is good, and I sent all my money to I. This is this is a true story. I sent my money to Mount Gox, and uh, uh -huh. it did it. Mount Gox did not like give me a confirmation that they had my money yet. So I had a birthday party to go to in Brooklyn, so I left my house and I just left my computer. And then uh, the next day, it, it went from 30 to 20. And I was like, I was like, yeah. it's gonna, I, I thought, it's gonna go back up one more time. And then the, I went to Vegas, where you are now, Bruce, and the, the yeah. Mt. Gox scandal happened. The, the hacking, the hacking, yeah. the hacking the scandal. Hacking. There was a hacking scandal. Mm. It caused a lot of uh, like uh, yeah. uncertainty it's all in the Bitcoin. Fun when it doubles, but when it cuts in half, it's not so much fun. Right. So, <laughs> so I'm still holding on to my bitcoins, uh, and uh, but yeah, you, that's but, the thing. You know Hold the, on to them because the thing is that if you bought them at, at uh, when you bought right. them at thirty, even even if people bought them at thirty, if it goes up to seventy, if it goes up to one hundred by the end of the year, it's still a great investment, even if you bought it at thirty. Right. So you have to hold on to it for a year. Right. And try not to buy it the bubble, of course. I, I actually, my, uh, my show on YouTube, which is Prax Girl, P R A X G I R L, <laughs> where we talk about the science of praxeology, okay. we only accept Bitcoin donations right now, although there's people that are really pushing us to accept, like, PayPal donations and other things like that. But uh, we only accept Bitcoin donations, so I haven't cashed in any of those donations. <laughs> Yes, that's great. You, you got to hold on to them. By the way, I'm a big fan of Frax Girl. I love it. I just discovered it the other day because I was, uh, you know, we were, <laughs> it's so funny because we were hanging out with, you know, Dan and uh, my friends, uh, uh, Chris and Fred, were like, oh, yeah, he's on um, uh, The Good Wife. And they're like, uh-huh. And then, and uh, he's, he's the one who creates Frax Girl. And they're like, Frax Girl? Oh, my God, Frax Girl. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't even impressed with The Good Wife. But when they mm -hmm. heard you were, Thank you. And I think it's great that you accept only Bitcoin. I think more businesses should do that. It just really, if you want to be a Bitcoin evangelist, you're not a Bitcoin evangelist unless you say our business only accepts no. Bitcoin. Right, right. Like, well, that you know, to get Bitcoin, you know, the, the, you go to right? right. There's, there's reasons for us to want to only accept Bitcoin. I mean, a lot of it had to do with Prax Girl herself uh, valuing anonymity. Um, you know, she's a, yeah. she's like an attractive girl and she gets a lot of like trolls and stalkers and stuff. Mm. 
And so there's a there's there's a value in that that you can't really find out who's mm. behind it. Although oh, okay. although I mean I'm 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 here. I'm the creator and all that. Uh, but uh, I was gonna say that the important thing that I wanted to say out of this whole thing is that I think everybody that is either looking to invest in Bitcoin or believes in Bitcoin for ideological reasons or any reason why you're getting in Bitcoin, it's always to your best. It's always in your best interest to know as much as possible about what you're getting involved in, and that's why you should. Definitely learn about the science of praxeology and um, understand what money is. Uh, I'm not claiming bitcoins are money, but they're um, they they are uh, definitely a medium of exchange. So you have to understand um, why do bitcoins have any value at all, and uh, uh, you know why is it that that bitcoins work when all these people try to put it down and all that. And mostly it's because the people, the creators of, of Bitcoin, if it's one person or a group of people, they figured out how to um, display property rights in Bitcoins. We can distinguish that a certain Bitcoin belongs to one person as opposed to another person. This, the, the, the fact that you can't counterfeit Bitcoins is, uh, is, is the way to show that there is some sort of property right in the in the abstraction because really it's just a bunch of it's a bits bits of information but that's that's really what's going to that's that's what's going to make or break bitcoin as long as they you can enforce property rights uh there's going to be a, a a value for it for anonymity for ease of use for avoiding taxes for all these different things uh, it, and it varies with who wants to get involved, um, but uh, I, I, ju I just think it's important for people to really, you can never know too much about what you're getting involved in. So, so it's definitely worth it for people. If you want to learn about Praxeology, go to Prax Girl. That's what I say. Yeah. Go to Prax Girl's yeah, channel on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Right, P R A X G I R L, Prax Girl, and that's where you know we t we teach the science of praxeology, and it explains these kind of things. It's it's really it's the parent science of economics. Um, it's the logic of all human action, but from it is where you d you understand what what uh, what money is and how it comes to be and why it's important and all that. And um, I you know. Yeah, we, we just did our episode on money uh, last month, so uh, we, we talk about how money comes to be and why it's important, and uh, our last episode, which uh, actually came out on Monday, we talk about economic calculation and what that is, and money serves as a common denominator that allows you to really determine uh, your the, 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 sta the, the state that you're in. Uh, as to whether you're going to be able to achieve an end or not, uh, that sounds a little a little complicated, but it's not. It's it's just all it means is that if you're in a barter economy, you have to determine the value of something, uh, at, uh, uh, as opposed to what you're what you want to trade for it. So you so if someone has oranges and you have an apple, you have to value the orange more than the apple, uh, and you have to perform this type of valuation with every single thing that you want to trade money just removes that uh, so something like Bitcoin if it were to be the predominant medium of exchange in a society an online society for example uh, it allows people to do to, ha to, to basically do accounting ledgers and you can add and subtract and multiply and divide one good which is Bitcoin against all the other goods you want to buy. It's very simple. This mm -hmm. is it's we we think in these terms all the time with money. Yeah. Right. I mean, we do this all the time, right? We we say, "Well, how much money do I have in my pocket and what am I going to be able to do with that money?" 
and it just eliminates, right. it allows a human being to think in a certain mode that is not possible under barter. And so that's, that's like what we try to talk about. So, yeah. Exactly. yeah. It's uh, essentially, it's, it, it's like right. To... Yeah, it's essentially, it's still barter. The only thing is that now there's this common good that we all that we agreed all trade on. every we we all agreed upon it, right? It, yeah. Well, the, the yeah. it's not it doesn't come about like through a central planner. That's what that's what's so interesting about Bitcoin. It's like oh, I meant uh, USD. I meant USD. Well, yeah, yeah, USD. But but you have to understand the history of why USD still has value. Mm -hmm. This is this is a concept that we have called m the money regression theory. We have to understand how is it that pieces of paper that aren't backed by anything, how is it that people still accept them for payment for real goods and services? Mm -hmm. And what you find is that that actually, uh, I think I have one in my pocket here. You find that once upon a time, uh, they were backed by this, right? So every, every dollar was actually, the, the piece of paper was a representation of one of these in the US Treasury, right. which is where you're supposed to be from in the show. And at some point, they stopped redeeming the pieces of paper for this. But there's a reason why the piece of paper still has a value, because people were trading it beforehand. Mm -hmm. So this, this, is the, this is the logic that you have to understand. And I was going to say, Bruce, the only reason that we're not going to cover uh, Bitcoin on our show is because if Bitcoin does turn out to be some sort of trend that dies off, because... Even if Bitcoin is, even if Bitcoin has a real use, it's foreseeable that some technology could, could surpass and, and replace Bitcoins. And if Bitcoin loses value uh, on a massive scale and, and goes down to one cent again, uh, the, the reason that we don't want to talk about Bitcoin on our show is because this, this in terms of propaganda would, would be seen as a, as, a, as a win for the people that talk badly about Bitcoin and a lose for everyone that supports Bitcoin. So we don't want to get into that kind of game and we don't talk about Bitcoin um, aside from accepting donations because it is possible that, that uh, the, the market can go t in another direction and people are going to try to use that as some sort of ad hominem attack to show that praxeology uh, is not valid or something. So we don't talk about that. But, uh, but Nevertheless, you can use the. Right. Right. Yes. And if everybody changes their mind, which could happen, right. anything could happen. Um, that could happen to the US dollar or the euro, I agree. Right, yeah. Whatever. You know, it could happen to anything. Yeah, what well, we. Well, what we try to say is, as, um, as opposed to people that talk about Bitcoin and talk about, they use loaded terms like intrinsic value and things like that, uh, because a lot of people that try to dis people that try to say Bitcoin uh, is is worthless, what they say is Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. For example, silver has value as a as a as a good because it's, it's used in industrial uses and computers and things like okay, that, right? Okay, okay. But they say Bitcoins are just pieces of data and they don't have any intrinsic value. Well, what we say is nothing has intrinsic value. So in a sense, when you say people agree on it, you bo both you, Bruce and, and, um, and Nick said people agree on it. I think in a sense that, that it does apply. What that means is that when you act to trade your dollars for bitcoins, you're acknowledging in your action that you value bitcoins. Yes. So that's all. That's all that we're. That's all that we're. That uh, that we're concerned with. People are. Va people are appreciating the va the market value of bitcoins through their actions. People are buying and trading bitcoins, and they're using it to buy market uh, market you know goods and services. Uh, <laughs> I play poker with bitcoins because I can't play <laughs> poker online with real uh, with. Uh, I was going to say real money with dollars anymore, because uh, the Obama administration shut that down. 
I was I was really into it. I really liked playing. I was too. Oh, are, are I you, was too. Are you an online poker full I, tilt? Uh, back in the day, yeah. yeah, yeah. All of them, full tilt, party yeah. poker, poker stars. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I love I love that. I love that. So yeah. I can't do that anymore, but I can no. do it with Bitcoin. It's interesting. Yeah. Don't tell me that. I don't want to but know. But let me let me. <laughs> Yeah, let me pass you to Nick, though, because I've talked too long. Okay. Okay, no problem. Uh, I was just going to say about intrinsic value that, yeah, I don't buy that at all. I think that whole argument is garbage because, you know, gold has some intrinsic value in industry and silver does. And paper, obviously, paper can be used to light a fire in your fireplace, and that's about as good as the U.S. dollar. You know, that's just all nonsense because those values, uh, the intrinsic value of the substance of the, the thing, uh, yeah, it has some value, apparently, but that has no relation whatsoever to the value of gold as a store of wealth, a store of money. So, you know, the same thing with digital. And by, the, by the way, the U.S. dollar is not really paper anyway. Like 99% of all U.S. dollars are just uh, fictional digital currency. And they're literally fictional. They just add more zeros at the Fed and type, type in more zeros and they made more dollars. So if you're talking about a fictional digital currency, it's the U.S. dollar for sure. Uh, Bitcoin at least has, you know, state-of-the-art cryptography behind it that people cannot print more just because they feel like it. So, you know, money is, you know, money could be, uh, you know, clamshell. That's where that term, you know, clams comes from. It could be anything that we all say, yeah, there's only so much of this, and let's, let's call it money, let's treat it like money. You treat it like money, it's money. Well, it's like well. A word. If you use the word well, I, 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 yeah, I, I do want to say one thing about that, though. It's, it's not as though Bitcoin could have been money because Satoshi decided that it was money. The, it, the, when something becomes money is really up to historians to look back at because it's not easily definable. Like, uh, you know, there's a lot of historians that try to say that there was no money in certain societies of the past, but then uh, uh, historians that apply what I consider to be proper economic theory... Uh, are able to identify that things that uh, wither away that we can't find anymore must have been money because of the size of the markets that that we can see existed in, the, in in this society. So what I mean to say is, logically, bitcoins must have had value to people for some other use before they became money, if in fact they are money. They must have had some other use. And what I believe that use was is a facilitator of, of, of exchange through primarily anonymous means. I think that was the real, uh, that, I think that's the real interest. It becomes money once people, once, once the society treats it like money. Because what happens is uh, rather than being traded for one cent uh, at some point, it gets the, the value gets appreciated in like this kind of snowball effect because right. even people that didn't want to use Bitcoins before and saw no value in the anonymity start to value it simply because enough people are using it as a medium of exchange. So all, all I'm trying to say is that it's not money from the get-go. And it's possible, and I, I wouldn't say whether Bitcoins are money now or not, but it's possible... Uh, that at some point they became money, uh, but I don't know. But the point is, in the last two years, people have started to use this, this device in order to buy goods and services, sometimes illegal services, drugs and things like that. Yeah. But uh, it's not really up, to, it's not really, it's not Satoshi's decision or our decision when it becomes money. It becomes money when the society treats it like money. And societies, I mean, that's, that's kind of a difficult term to, de to define as well, but, yeah. but, 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 but that's, I don't really care whether it's money or not. All I care about is, will it achieve, will it help me achieve my end? If my end is to buy acid from, <laughs> on Silk Road, then that's, I need Bitcoins, you know, that's, <laughs> no, I, I, seriously, yeah. Silk Road is this website, it's like the Amazon.com of drugs. Okay. And, uh, and you, can, you can buy illegal drugs there using Bitcoins. Wow. You know, it's on this uh, <laughs> secret internet or whatever, but, <laughs> but, the, but I mean, I've just... The thing is, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's definitely one use case, and that's obviously one that's uh, very uh, widely reported. But there's, there's also, the, like, Google, uh, Google Wallet, I mean, everybody is going for a better form factor for money um, in day-to-day -day spending everywhere. I mean, the, the uh, subway 
Chick-fil-A there or whatever restaurants and, you know, hair salons and whatever it is. So if I, my, my thing is, I believe that, I mean, by definition, my definition, Bitcoin is money already because I know that I can go, I can now get a, I go to see a massage therapist and I can go to lunch and a, a dinner and I can spend with Bitcoin and I can also get cash readily with Bitcoin too. So it's, it, it's already become money in my world at least. Um, and we're, uh, a lot of our initiatives are setting up all kinds of brick and, brick and mortar businesses to accept it, like of every type, CPAs, makeup artists, you know, you name it, vitamin stores, I mean, absolutely every kind of business all throughout Manhattan and throughout the world. Um, so as that spreads and our point of sale systems become better, yeah, I think it's going to happen like literally like wildfire. You're going to see that, wow, this is even easier and better than Google Wallet or any of these other initiatives, and it's really money. I mean, the, the other thing is that, the um, you know, back in the old days when they would literally travel down the, the trade route, like the book road, and they would carry bags of gold and silver, um, somebody discovered that the, uh, you know, the goldsmith note on paper was a lot better form factor. So it, from a technology standpoint, carrying paper was much preferable to carrying bags of gold. So this is the same thing. It's sometimes the technology itself, the fact that it's, it's uh, you know, as anonymous as you want it to be, and it's instantaneous, and it's zero fees, and all that, it's just the technology that's going to win, yeah. and the form factor of it. But so the by, and also the fact that it's decentralized, not issued by anybody, and it can't be, um, you know, uh, they can't create more of it just at a, on a whim. That's true, so Bruce. Of but those issues, I was going to say, but gold has the same um, qualities to it, and in a in a. a well, all of them. well, I was going to say that in you a. Can't, you can't give me a million of a bitcoin. I mean, of a, of a gold. Well, I I can if I have a, a an interface provided to me by some bank in a in a libertarian society, uh, where there's no, yeah. you know, if there's no government. I can essentially do the same thing with gold. You know, I can do e-gold exchanges and things right, like that. It to, but it's not decentralized. It's still, it's still centralized. So well, some people I, view it as preferable, but it's not. There's no authority that could be corrupted. You know? Well, yeah, I'm, and that's or, why. You know. That's why I put the. That's why I put the the um, the qualification that this would have to happen in a in a world where there's no government. They, it, it, yeah. As long as there's a government, I see that something like a Bitcoin technology will have some sort of value to people. But I'm just saying that yeah. in a in a in an anarchist society, I I don't think Bitcoin would last very long. I think uh, it would it would start to lose its its value pretty quickly because you can do the same thing with gold, mm -hmm. and uh, and gold's been money much longer if than Bitcoin. So people trust gold. Yeah. Well, it's not a it's not a central a, a central a, a central business that a warehouse that holds your holds your gold for you. But there's yeah. a there's a like, it's called money that exists now, right? But not without a government. But but look, but Bruce, you you kept your you kept your bitcoins in my Bitcoin, and you lost them all. You were you were yeah. using a service to protect your bitcoins, just like people with gold yep. use banks to protect their gold. You know, so. There's right. definitely a value in having that. It doesn't matter what society you're living in. I'm I'm just making the case that in a world without government, they that the that bitcoins wouldn't have any value. And that's just to let everybody that, that that's an investor know that's really the way you can gauge what's what's the future of Bitcoin is. How tyrannical is your government getting? You know, is are they, are they raising your taxes beyond the the point of of no return, then then Bitcoin will continuously go up. But mm -hmm. if, if the government's collapsing because of you know debt ceilings and stuff, and they start to pull austerity measures and destroy you know destroy part, big parts of the government and and liberalize their their uh, society, then maybe Bitcoins go down. You know, uh, then yeah. they start you know you know if they remove regulations on gold, then suddenly everyone. We'll switch to gold. I don't know. It's the job of the. It's the job of people like you, Bruce, who are entrepreneurs, 
to put your money where your mouth is and, and, and tell us what's going to show, show us by example what's going to be the, uh, the thing that makes everybody money. But hey, well, let, me, let me pass you to Nick. I, I keep, I keep, I, I'm talking too much. I'm tired. Nick is the guy. Look, Nick is the guy on the, on the commercial. He's the one that arrests Jason Biggs or detains him or whatever. Yeah, you know. Wait a minute. Can you hold the mic a little closer because I couldn't hear you? I just, I just said Nick is the guy on the commercial that puts his hands on Jason Biggs and takes him away. Exactly. <laughs> yes. One, one thought about the one other thought about the uh, the idea. I mean, if, if there were no government and we were in an anarchist society and uh, we had uh, companies, it would be a private company that would warehouse gold. I mean, basically they're operating the same as gold money. But I I disagree with one thing you said, and that is that the Bitcoin would have no value because, in, in my opinion, um, Bitcoin is still superior because you don't need any gold and you don't need any warehouse and you don't need to trust any company with a fact. I think, uh, I, I think Bitcoin is open to the same vulnerability as, as gold. I mean, you still have to, I mean, if, let's say you print your Bitcoins out on a piece of paper and then put it in a safety deposit box or in a, in, a, in a safe in your house, it can be broken into just like if you put gold in that safe, you know? I mean, it has... That's true. It'll, it'll work its way out. Yeah. Either way, I mean, I think they're both good. I think they're, they're for their purposes, they're, they're different. Um, obviously, you can't carry actual gold around to go to lunch and, you know, shop uh, in the main street stores. Uh, but, but anyway, they, if there's, there are pros and cons. It's, it's evolving. I think that definitely gold, silver, and Bitcoin are um, the future, for sure. I think people are just tired of the... Uh, Uh, I I hear what I hear what you're saying. Ask, uh, uh, but you should ask Nick, Nick uh, what what uh, how they train him to be a government agent, because that's the real question. Oh yeah, that's a great question, Nick. Well, they didn't. They, how did they tell you? They uh, you know they they kind of just trusted me to 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 do my own thing. They didn't really give me any training other than the uh, the costume. The costume was pretty. Um, be great. I have this really long overcoat and a really nice tie, and it really, you know, put me in the. I even had a badge. It was great. But <laughs> I. I a, your real government agents don't dress so well, probably. You know, I, I don't know. I think that if I were a government agent, I would look like that. <laughs> we we even had pieces. Apparently, <laughs> apparently we were we were supposed to have guns, but. Never got to use them. I, I guess our, we were always wearing our overcoats, so they just never really gave them to us. But we were armed. Interesting. We're supposed to be armed. What is the treasury? You were supposed to be a treasury department agent of some sort? Right. Or FBI or uh, Federal treasury, yeah. Federal treasury. Not FBI, though. No. Treasury. I wonder if the treasury even has their own law enforcement people. I don't know. I doubt it. Well, if... Uh, if you know Mr. Bitcoin starts to show his face, then you know we'll pop out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it'll probably be the FBI or the CIA. Yeah, or yeah. NSA or something like that. Or they'll just give yeah. me a call too. I mean, you know, after Sunday, hopefully, yeah. hopefully people will realize, will come to the senses and just call me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they can call you anytime they need to find Mr. So did your research about Satoshi? 
Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I think that, um, well, I, actually, I, I, I don't want to get too much into the episode. I don't want to give anything away. Um, but I, I did a, a little bit, but, you know, um, but not not a ton, no. You know that the, yeah. it seems a little bit like the episode is inspired by the, the New Yorker article. Um, maybe remind I'm, me. Maybe it's inspired by something else. I'm trying to think of, I the, know that article. There was a New Yorker article where this guy goes to a convention mm-hmm. And tries to find Mr. Bitcoin, uh, right. a reporter. Yeah, I think that that it may be based on that a little bit. It's it's uh, the episode. There is a, a scene where um, it's in a convention. And I was there with in, you. It's in Chicago, and right, yeah. um, you actually may or may not. I know. See, uh, you may actually meet the guy that created it. You may not, though. I don't want to. I'm not going to say. It, leave it in the uh-huh. air. <laughs> you know, one of the things we were, the Bitcoin community was really intrigued with was that they, in the little synopsis, they called it a, uh, an illegal cryptocurrency. Like, as if having a, creating a currency was illegal. Which, it's, nobody has claimed that it's illegal in the US or the UK. Right. I guess, I guess in this world, you know, this, this, Slightly yeah. fictionalized world. It's illegal. Um, yeah. <laughs> there was a, there was a senator that was calling to make it officially illegal. Chuck Schumer. Okay. Yeah. The, um, he, yeah. He, okay. So you heard that. One guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, who are the writers that wrote this to come up with these stories? You know, they they I I don't know. I've I've never met the writers, um, but I know that they are basically always working. I know that. <laughs> did they change the script yeah, while you were on? They did. We got script changes every day. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm under the impression that that's just always happening. And it's just the way it goes because they're um, constantly in need of adjustments, uh, whether it be just for a location situation or um, a line adjustment or the fact that this character is not in the scene anymore, so they need to... <laughs> take out lines, or whatever it is, but they are always, always working, and yeah, they they don't get a break. Fascinating. <laughs> They're really on the cutting edge of uh, what's happening. They must be scouring the news to find uh, stories like this. So yeah. We gotta, kudos we, to we them for up. finding these hot stories. Absolutely. Um, here, I'm yeah, so I guess we got to wrap it up here, uh, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah, it's time, isn't it? I, 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 I'm not, I don't have my time clock here because I'm all remote on the phone and everything, but uh, in spite of our technical glitches, I'm so appreciative of you guys uh, taking the time to join us uh, before this episode airs on Sunday. I really appreciate you coming into the studio. No problem, no problem. Thanks for having us. All right, yeah. We'll, we'll follow up afterwards and see in the, in the wrap of what happens the week <laughs> of... Uh, the Bitcoin for Dummies episode. So uh, be sure everybody watch on CBS, The Good Wife, The Good Wife. Everybody already watches, they already know. But it's <laughs> Sunday night, 9 o'clock Eastern. You're going to watch, Bitcoin right? Episode, which is, oh, yeah, I'll be watching watch it. Anyway, everybody will. I, I guess I... On YouTube, go to Frax Girl. P-R-A-X Girl. Frax Girl on YouTube. Check that out. Science of Praxeology. Yeah. Praxeology. Yeah, you'll learn all about you never knew you needed to know. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Nick. Uh, Nicholas Flower. Thank Robert you. Robert Taylor. Again, so appreciate it. We're going to do this again. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. I'll see you when I get back to New York. Bye.